The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Ned Greer and Jack Ratner left their dog team near the creek in the darkness and walked cautiously toward the small cabin in the woods that was lighted by a dimly burning lantern. Though there were no windows in the tiny house, a dim streak of light shone under the crack of the door, and the two men stopped under a pine tree a short distance away. Looks as if old man Stevens is still up. Uh, it's late. Maybe he went to sleep without blowing out the lantern. Think we'd better wait a while? Uh, not too long. It's cold. Well, what if he is awake? He's no match for the two of us. Well, he may have a gun, an old man living alone like this. If he's got the gold you say he has, he'd have some protection. He probably can't shoot it too good. And anyway, he feels perfectly safe out here. All these old sourdoughs think that if they're out in the woods far enough, nobody will bother them. <laughs> I bet he doesn't even lock his door. Well, maybe he won't have enough gold for us to bother with. Oh, yes, he has. Look, that claim of his ain't any bonanza, but it pays off. And he's been working it a long time. It'll be enough to give us a start. Maybe we can buy a good claim instead of spending half of our lives trying to find one. Uh, nobody will ever find the old codger out here, that's sure. When I talked to him the other day, he said that I was the first man he'd seen since he went to the trading post four months ago. My feet are freezing. Well, come on, then. Let's not wait any longer. We'll go right in, quietly, without knocking. Just us, Joe. We came to pay you a little visit. Well, you're up to no good. Or you'd have knocked at the door. You'd better get out of here. Now, Grandpa, is that the way to treat visitors? I wonder. Now, get out. He's got a gun. Look out, Ned. Oh, drop the gun. gun. Ah. Uh, knocked him out. You hurt much, Ned? He got me in the arm. It's bleeding. Well, let's see your arm. Here, take your parka off. I'll help you. Yep. Take it easy. Hurry. Yeah, I'll roll up your sleeve. The old man comes to... Ah, it to... won't matter. I took his oh. gun away from him. Yeah, you were lucky. A little more to the right, and he'd have got me through the heart. Well, he didn't. This ain't bad. The bullet went through the fleshy part of your arm. But it's bleeding hard. The bullet must have hit an artery or a vein. There's a piece of cloth hanging on that nail. I'll bind it up with this. If you can just stop this bleeding... Here. This will do it. Oh, <clears throat> What are we going to do with the old man? Now, tie him up, and we look for his gold. Couldn't we stay here tonight? I feel kind of weak. You'll be able to travel, all right. Can't take a chance on staying here. A trapper or someone might come by. Take the gold and try to get as far as Turtle Lake. But that's about five miles from here. Well, the farther the better. Oh. We're right on the sled part of the time. Those three mangy dogs we have can hardly pull the sled now. If I ride, we'll have to drop some of the supplies. We can pick up some more at the new trading post on Turtle Lake. There. Oh, oh, oh. Your arm's fixed. Now I'll look for the gold. If you tie the old man up, are we going to cut him loose before we leave here? Let him run for help somewhere? Do you think I'm crazy? But he'll freeze to death. This cabin will be cold as the outdoors in 24 hours. Well, you'll have to take that chance. <laughs> Maybe someone will cut him loose before that, but it certainly isn't going to be me. I'd better get him tied to a chair before he comes to. And we'll find the gold and head for Turtle Lake. It was early morning, but darkness still enveloped the land when Jake and Ned neared Turtle Lake. The dogs were tired and crept along slowly, while Ned staggered beside the sled. Jake, we've got to stop. My arm is starting to bleed again. There's a trading post just a little bit farther. We've got to keep going. Is it safe to, to stop there? Sure. Aren't any cabins near it? There it is, straight ahead. Must you lazy hound! Must! Uh, if we only had a decent dog team. They'll be all right after some rest. The man who owns the trading post, he might be curious about my arm. Never mind, it's all right. Let me handle it. I got a good story cripped up. Ho, ho! Oh, he's not. 
not up yet. We'll have to wake him. My arm is bleeding bad. It's dripping right down my sleeve. Whoever owns this trading post must be asleep in the back. They open up. I never knew this post was here. It hasn't been here long. We'll be safe here until we get some rest anyway. I'm coming. Ah, there he is. Uh, who is it? Sorry to wake you up, but we had trouble. My partner's been shot. Well, come in, come in. Sorry if uh, I kept you waiting. I was sound asleep. Now, just wait a minute, and I'll turn that lantern up so we can see better. Sorry to disturb you like this. Oh, that's all right. What happened to you? Someone tried to rob us. Rob you? Yeah. He's hiding on the trail. Guess he didn't know there were two of us. Shot my partner here, but when I shot back at him, he ran. I don't know whether I nicked him or not. I was riding on the sled, and he couldn't see me in the dark. Well, you were lucky. We've had lots of robberies on the trail. Now, sit down here, mister. I'll see what I can do for you. Yeah, thanks. I need rest more than anything. I'm weak. We didn't stop the camp after Ned got shot. Thought I'd better get him to shelter someplace quick. Well, you can both go to bed right there in my back room. Sleep as long as you please. I don't expect many customers today. <laughs> I did a lot of business the first part of this week, so I guess most of the miners and trappers around here have their supplies. Yep, roll your sleeve up. I'll have a look at that arm. We just tied a piece of rag around it to keep it from bleeding too much. Hey, uh, is that an iron safe you got back there? Uh, yep, uh, I brought it with me. It's too far to Dawson to get my money there often enough. Well, maybe you'd keep ours there for the night. We're taking our gold to Dawson to the bank. Why, sure, I'll be glad to. I do it for a lot of the miners around here. Keep it for weeks at a time. Well, bring it in, then. It's out on the sled. I'll go and feed the dogs and put them in the woodshed. Hmm? Good idea. In the meantime, I'll fix your friend's arm. Then you can have a good sleep. Uh, let's see. Better get some hot water and wash it first. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was headed for the Dawson Trail. His big dog, King, ran free ahead of the team as they crossed Turtle Lake early that morning. Plotting beside the Monty was Jacques Fontaine, a French trapper. It was lucky for me you come to my cabin last night. <laughs> Them poor, they heavy for carry all the way on my back. <laughs> Your dog team, she is big help. Glad I could give you a lift, Shock. That supper you cooked for me last night was well worth all the help I can give you. It, it is good we have new trading posts here on Turtle Lake. Now I do not have to go all the way to Dawson. I stopped there a week ago. Old Bill Daniels running it. Good friend of mine. I knew him in Dawson. Bill, he is fine man. We have easy trip today. I'm glad that snow had stopped yesterday. Just about three inches fell. The looks of the sky, we're going to get some more of it today, though. This lake, it looked like smooth white hold, blanket. Hold your huskies. Come on, Shark. Your dog, King. He goes through holy night. The snow must have covered it. King, King. I'll get you, boy. This way, fella. I'll get his collar. Watch out, Sergeant. Come on, boy. Don't you come. There you are. Poor dog. I better get some of that water off him with a blanket. Come on, King. Some poor dig fishing hole too big. Yes. Thin layer of ice froze over it and snow covered the ice. I'll rub him off with this blanket. Come here, boy. Maybe you should wrap him in blanket, no? Well, no, Jacques. It'll be better if he runs. It'll keep the water from freezing on him. We're quite close to Bill's trading post. I'll let him dry off there. All right, King. Up front, boy. On, King! On! As Sergeant Preston and Jacques neared the trading post, they crossed the trail of the dog sled that led down from the woods. Ned's staggering tracks were outlined clearly in the fresh snow, and red stains stood out clearly in the whiteness where his arm had bled. Jacques, look at those tracks. That looks like blood. We, oui. Someone is hurt. That is blood, sure enough. Those tracks lead right to Bill's trading post. Maybe he stopped there for help. There is other man with him. We'll find out soon enough. Here we are. Hooking! Hi, you husky! Come along, King. I want you to dry off in here. Hello, Bill. Well, hello there, Sergeant. Bonjour, Bill. How are you, Jack? Well, King, old fellow, you're all wet. He fell through a hole in the ice. 
Somebody had cut a big fishing hole, and the thin ice was covered with snow. Well, poor fella. <laughs> Come over here near the stove and dry off. <laughs> Would you two like some breakfast? Why, no thanks, Bill. I stayed with Jacques last night. We had breakfast before we left this morning. I'll give you some tea anyway. That I would like. I'll have to wait here till King gets dry. The ice is caked on him. Yeah, better give him a rub down, Sergeant. Uh, here. Use this sack. Oh, thanks, Bill. Come here, King. I got some of that ice off you, boy. I'm glad you stopped here, Sergeant. Two men came in a couple of hours ago. Oh. One of them has been shot. Shot? Yes, we saw their tracks in the snow. Yeah, someone tried to hold them up on the trail. Were they robbed? No, they got away. The wounded man's partner shot at the robber, but thinks he missed him. The men still here? They're both asleep in the back room. <laughs> they were so tired they could hardly stand. The one who was shot lost a lot of blood. He's quite weak. Huh. Bullet went right through his arm. It is good he has you to fix it. Well, his arm's going to be all right. He needs rest, though. Were they carrying any gold? Uh, yes, quite a bit. I put it in my safe for them. This is case for you, Sergeant. You say this happened to them last night? Yep, I came straight here. There was a fresh snowfall yesterday. If I could backtrack, I might be able to pick up the trail of the man who shot him. Them track are clear in snow. Do you want me to wake him up so you can talk to him? Did they get a look at the person who held him up? No, they didn't. They said it was dark when it happened. Oh. There have been quite a few holdups on the trail, so they got away as fast as they could. Well, there's no use in waking them, then. i better leave before the snow starts falling. We're uh, due for another storm. Maybe you would let me go with you, Sergeant. Me, I am good at tracking. It's a good idea, Jacques, if you want to come. I'm not going to be able to wait till King's dry. I'll leave him here with you, Bill. <laughs> well, even though we're good friends, I'm afraid he won't like that very well. Well, I don't mean keep him here till I get back. Wait till he's dry and then let him out. He'll follow my trail and catch up with us. Maybe that robber, he is a long way from here. We'll be able to trail him if the snow doesn't start too soon. Well, come on, Jacques, we can't wait for tea. <laughs> no, King. Sorry, old boy, but you're staying here for a while. Well, good luck, Sergeant. I'll let King follow you later on. A short time after Sergeant Preston and Jacques left the trading post, Jake awoke in the back room. Ned was snoring beside him, and Jake shook him. Ned. Ned, wake up. Oh, Ned. Oh, uh, Ned. Uh, ouch, my arm. Hey, what's the idea? Hey, look, we've had enough rest. We've got to get going. Not yet. I'm tired. Get up, I... I say. It's daylight. We can't stay here too long. Someone might find old Joe. Now, come on. All right. Oh, my arm is stiff. You're able to travel all right, aren't you? I guess so. I'm glad it's my left arm. At least I can still handle a gun. <laughs> you may have to before we get out of here. What do you mean? Look, you came back here and went to sleep before I could tell you my plans. I let Bill put our gold in his safe before I came to bed. Well, he's honest. He'll give it to us. Sure. <laughs> and that ain't all he's going to give us. Huh? He's got more in that safe than our gold. He's got other people's gold and some of his own. You mean when he opens that safe to give us ours, we take the rest and leave. Here, look. Look through this window. It's starting to snow. Our tracks will be covered in an hour. Nobody will know we were here at all. Now, come on. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'll get my boots on. Yeah, where's my... Yeah. Oh, Come on out right away. I'll go ahead and see that the coast is clear. Well, <laughs> good morning. You up already? Yep. I guess we better be hurrying along. Had a good sleep. Hmm, how about some breakfast? Kept it hot for you? No, I'll wait for Ned. He'll be out in a minute. In the meantime, I think I'll get the sled ready to leave. Do you mind giving me the gold we left in your safe? I'd like to pack it on the sled. Sure. I'll open the safe. Now, let's see. Six, three, four, three. Ooh, there's your partner now. How's the arm this morning? That's a lot better. That's good. Now, let's see. Where was I? Six, three, four, three. Right. There we are. Now, 
Now, I believe these All are... right, now get away from that face. What? Why? Get away from it, I said. Take your hands off me, you are... Why? No, you don't. King, lying near the stove toward the front of the store, rose to his feet as the men began to fight. And then with a growl, he raced toward Jake, just as Jake struck Bill a terrific blow. Jake, look out for that dog! Oh, man, help! Oh. Get him off of me, man! Get away, you get away! As the great dog knocked Jake to the floor, Ned ran up behind him with a rifle that stood near the counter. Swinging it with all his might, he hit King. And the dog fell stunned beside Jake. I got him. Where'd that dog come from? He must have been lying up there beside the stove. Well, it's a good thing you can use that right on. You might have killed me. I hit him with the butt of this rifle. It must be Bill's dog to come at you like that when you hit Bill. Say, look. Bill hit his head on the corner of the safe when you knocked him down. Yeah. Did it kill him? I'll see. Oh, he's still breathing. Hey, look. Maybe we can make it look as if he slipped and fell. We got to get a move on. I can help get the gold out of there, even with one arm. I'll stack it near the door. Oh, wait a minute. Something else I want to do first. What? Get that rope over there. I'm going to tie and muzzle this dog. What for? He's knocked out. He won't bother us. Look at him. He's big and powerful. Oh, he sure is. He could pull a bigger load all by himself than all three of our dogs put together. But that wrap on the head I gave him won't do him any good. That won't hurt him much. He'll be over that in a couple of hours. Oh, we've got to get out of here fast. A customer might come in. We'll carry this dog along on the sled after we tie and muzzle him. By the time we make camp, he'll be better and we can hitch him up with the team. But Jake, we might meet someone on the trail to Dawson who'll know he's Bill's dog. Anybody who trades here would remember him. We're not going directly to Dawson from here. We don't want to be seen on that trail at all. We'll go straight south and then cut back. It'll take longer, but we can't take any chances. Well, with a strong dog like him, it won't matter if we have to take a longer route. Well, yeah, here's the rope. You tie him while I get the gold out of the safe. <laughs> The snow had begun to fall, but the tracks of Ned and Jake that Sergeant Preston was backtracking were still quite clear. As they entered the woods, Jacques looked puzzled. Those men, uh, they, they come a long way with one of them shots. We've come about four or five miles already. Look, Jacques, there's a cabin in the woods there. The trail leads directly to it. We oui. and dog team tracks stop here. Yes, but the men's tracks lead to the cabin door. Hold, 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 hold. Someone's calling for help in that cabin. That's right. I hear him, too. We're coming. Oh, cut me loose. Poor man. This place is cold. Got that fire going, Jacques. Oui, sir. I'll cut you loose. <coughs> Who did this? Two men. They knocked me out, then robbed me. Yes, I can see your cabin's been ransacked. Have they got your gold? They must have. <laughs> see, the trap door's open. That's where it was. Oh. My wrist. There you are. It's a good thing we get here. This fire is just about out. Soon he would freeze to death. I shot at them when they came in the way they did. I I think I hit one of them. Yes, you did. The men who robbed you were at the trading post on Turtle Lake. I'll have to get back there as soon as possible. You'd, uh, you'd better lie down there on the bed and we'll fix some food for you. Well, I'll be all right, Sergeant. Don't you worry none about me. I'm tougher than I look. You just go on back and get them vomit. I hope they haven't hurt Bill. Maybe your dog King, he'll be if they try hold him. It's one thing that worries me, Jacques. Something must have happened back there. A king would be here by this time. I told Bill to let him out as soon as he was dry. He should have overtaken us long ago. You better get back there fast. I can take care of myself. Well, Jacques could stay here with you. No need of it. I'm all right now. I was just... Stiff and cold from sitting there all tied up. This fire, she is go good now. Oh, thank you. Oh, say, there's some tea over there on the shelf. Maybe you'd better have some before you start back. And there's some soup left over from yesterday. Well, if we eat now, it would save time. But we'd better hurry. It'll be dark by the time we get back to Bill's. It was hours later when Sergeant Preston and Jacques got back to the trading post. The snow had fallen steadily, and the early darkness had settled when they stopped the team out in front. Oh! Oh, you Hold on. Sergeant, look. 
There is no light in Bill's trading post. Something's happened, all right. Light one of the lamps, Shark. Bill! Bill, where are you? Sergeant. Sergeant, here is the lantern. There's Bill. Bring the light. Hurry. Bill! Bill! Uh, help me. His head. Look. Get one of those blankets off the counter, Shark. Bill, what happened? Men hit me. Golden safe. Here is blanket. Oh, thanks, Shark. See if you can find some brandy. I don't want to move him until I can get a look at his head. Wait. Turn this way, Bill, can you? That's it. Oh, this is bad. You're going to need a doctor. Get those men. I'll get them, Bill. Don't worry. Here. Here is brandy. Thanks, Shark. Yeah. Take a swallow of this, Bill. Try a little more. Good. I think we'll be able to move him to the back room in a few minutes, Jack. The safe gold. Safe is shut. Was it open when they hit you? Yes. Where's King, Bill? Did you let him out to follow me? No. He was here. I, I don't know what happened. You think they take your dog, Sergeant? A well, King wouldn't go with them willingly, Jack. Maybe they kill him. They wouldn't bother taking the body of a dog away and leaving Bill here. Well, what you do? The snow would cover all trail. I'll have to leave for Dawson right away and send a doctor back here to take care of Bill. I can make it by morning. You stay here and take care of him till the doctor gets here. I'll do what I can for him before I leave. All right, Sergeant. It is bad you lose your dog. When the big dog King opened his eyes after being stunned by the blow from Jake, he found himself bound to a sled with a strong rope. He tried to slash at it with his teeth, but a strong leather thong tied around his muzzle left him powerless. His head throbbed with pain from the heavy blow he had received, and though the scent of the man who had hit him brought a growl of rage from his throat, he finally lay quietly until the sled stopped at a deserted cabin. Oh, hold it! Looks like a good place to spend the night. At least it's shelter. I sure don't want to go any farther. I'm ready for some rest. We can make Dawson easy tomorrow. That big dog helping the team. See how he is. Well, he's not friendly, that's sure. Shut up, you cur. I'll give you a taste of this. You take that muzzle off him. I don't want to be around. He won't take it off. We won't untie his legs yet, either. If you don't, he'll be too stiff tomorrow to run with the team. We can keep him hobbled and chain him in the cabin. We better wait till we get to Dawson to feed him. We can pen him up there. Well, he doesn't like us at all. I think we ought to let him go. I don't trust him. If he don't tame down, we'll sell him. He'll bring a good price. But he's going to help us pull the town tomorrow. I didn't go to all the trouble of bringing him this far for nothing. The two men slept heavily in the cabin while King, chained securely in a corner, tried every trick he knew to get out of the bonds that held him. At last, the great dog knew it was useless to struggle. He lay exhausted and finally slept. The following morning, Jeff dragged him to the head of the dog team, and before cutting the ropes on his legs, put him in harness. Keep still. Today you're going to work for us. Now! You can't get out of those traces without using your teeth. And that muzzle is staying on you till we get to dock. This is going to be easier. We can ride on the sled with him pulling it. Yeah, but he's going to take plenty of handling when he finds out what I can do with a whip, he'll soon get sensible. You all ready? Yep. Let's go. Now cut these ropes on his legs. There. Now march. March. King's legs were stiff and sore from being bound, but the great dog did all he could to get out of the harness. March. Get out of there. It was then that he felt the lash of Jake's whip, and he knew that the only way he could expect any mercy was to pull the sled with all his strength. And he threw his weight against the harness and set off at a swift pace toward Dawson. Sergeant Preston, having traveled all night, arrived in Dawson City late that morning. After sending the doctor to Bill's trading post, he talked to Inspector Grayson at Mounted Police Headquarters. It's a case of attempted murder and robbery of Bill and the man in the cabin, sir. Uh, was Bill able to give you any description of them at all? Well, yes, he was, Inspector. 
I was afraid to let him talk too much, but he gave me a general idea of what they looked like. And one of them has a bullet hole through his left arm. We know that. I can't understand your dog's disappearance. King would never go with them willingly, sir. And if he gets the chance, he'll come back here to me, no matter where they took him. You say there was no one who had seen them on the Dawson Trail? No, sir. I questioned three different people on the trail this morning. No one had seen them. Uh Uh-huh. But you think they may come here? They may have taken another route. Would have been longer, but they could have avoided meeting anyone. I think the best thing to do, Sergeant, is to wait a day or so and see if they turn up here. With a number of people in this town, it would be easy for them to escape identification and get supplies. If they thought we knew about them, this is the last place they'd come, sir. But under the circumstances, they may chance it. Well, anyway, you uh, need some rest. I advise you to get some good sleep and some dinner. I told the doctor to bring Bill here if it was safe to move him, Inspector. He has no one to take care of him at his trading post. Well, that was wise, Sergeant. If we catch these men, he'll be able to give positive identification. Now, you'll get some rest, and don't worry too much about King. He's taken care of himself before. I'll try not to worry, but, sir, if I catch these men and they've harmed him, I'm likely to forget I'm a mounted policeman. (laughs) Well, there are circumstances when the slight lapse of memory is uh, excusable. I can't say that I'd blame you. Sergeant Preston slept fitfully through part of the afternoon. The thought of King's loss kept him tossing and half awake. Darkness was falling when he finally got up and left the barracks. As he approached the gate that led to the street, he suddenly heard a commotion. And then Sergeant Preston gave a gasp of surprise as he recognized King, leading a dog team at a dead run straight for the police barracks gate. One man rode on the sled, and another lashed viciously at King with a whip as he tried to turn the big dog in another direction. The Mountie rushed toward him. Stop that whip. Stop it, I say. King. King, old boy. That dog belongs to me, and I can whip him if I please. Hi, Blake. I said drop that whip. Who are you? Hey, you got no right to hit him. That dog just wouldn't stop. This dog belongs to me, and I advise both of you to stay right where you are. I'm taking this muzzle off him. No, no, don't do that. He won't hurt you if I tell him not to. (laughs) Come, boy. No, King. I'd like to let you do it, but you can't. Watch him, fella. Uh, you can't arrest us just because that's your dog. We bought him from a man on the trail. Yeah, we bought him. You, get up off that sled. Get up, I say. Oh, my arm. Don't touch my arm. That's all I wanted to know. You're both under arrest for attempted murder and robbery. You can't arrest us for anything. You haven't any proof. I can hold you till Bill Daniel gets here to identify you. Bill Daniel? Bill didn't die the way you thought he would. The doctor's with him now and will bring him here to Dawson. But... How did you Get know going, it? you'll find out later. You made a bad mistake taking this dog of mine, didn't they, boy? Watch him, fella. You've helped a lot before, but this is the first time you ever brought two criminals to headquarters by yourself. Yes, old boy, thanks to you, this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production brought to you each week at this time. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. If it's a case of murder you'd like to listen to, that is, be sure to latch on to the Murder and Mr. Malone Show. Here's a Saturday night thriller primed to bring you minute after minute of exciting mystery and adventure. The hero of the program is John J. Malone, a famous Chicago criminal lawyer who makes only one condition before accepting a case. It must be tough to crack. And once you hear some of the cases Malone tackles, you'll agree it's uncanny how he solves them. The most minute clue doesn't escape the shrewd eyes of this smart detective who believes that given enough rope, any criminal will eventually hang himself. As Malone says, the brainiest criminal will betray himself in some tiny act left undone, some stray piece of evidence left behind at the scene of the crime, or oftentimes through overconfidence when a criminal thinks he has the police completely baffled. Don't miss Murder and Mr. Malone.